There we go. Okay, I'll just restart the streaming. Check. Mic check with the music on. Check, check. Sounds good, or as good as my voice sounds. <sighs> this mind map is in serious need of organization. I think the point of a mind map is not that it uh, <laughs> be a <laughs> series of separate nodes. <laughs>
on. What's my output? That's kind of weird. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this video output straightened so it's a bit smoother. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of CPU there. How about that, huh? Resumes. That's a bit faster. Uh, always blame Chrome. Here we go. That oh, looks much better. Let's see if this picks up my Chrome window again. Getting the cobwebs off here, I guess. That looks much smoother. Always blame Chrome. Always blame Chrome. There we go. I think we're caught up here. Music. World Gold Test. Music. 
Very nice. Let's go. Still got time. 5.22 in the morning. That is three Pomodoros. Down with making a stream. Let's reduce to six hundred. Try that. I mean, podcast. I'm not down with making a podcast. I did one of those. It was annoying to review and timestamp. Oh, that looks much better. speed, but I need to get my even better, better internet stream. Test for the music streaming. Come on, hit play, Troy. of this thing. I don't know, man. It's just chunky. Whatever. <coughs> Apologies, but... <coughs> <clears throat> We're doing it live! If it's a podcast, it's a podcast. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> See, in this case, I would be busy making visitor oh gosh look at me I'm smart I already did this
They do, I really did this. I didn't update my notes. Alright, start a Pomodoro officially. There we go. Just on time. Right on time. I'm gonna go that way and then up here. Ah, I got that. My favorite way of scrolling through here nowadays is uh, not control D U. Oh gosh, that is that is kind of nice. Maybe <laughs> maybe I do need a better way of favorite way of scrolling. There we go. <clears throat> There's some more to-dos on here. I mean, if I already to-did these, then why are they still in place? Wait, did I not finish this? Um... I think... Me as a user already has some of this. No, don't do that. Coffee. Coffee. Coffee drank. Mocha. Mocha espresso beverage. seriously considering getting a new computer, new, something with a little bit more horsepower so that I can stream for you all. Plus, <clears throat> whew, uh, get back my ability to draw on the screen. I like my Wacom, I like my drawing. I like to be able to draw stuff in OneNote, which is excellent software, by the way, and free for anyone with Windows 10. It's available freely as an app. <sighs> as a reduced functionality version, but it's still good. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> right. So, here's me. I'm me, and you're you. It has access 23. That's correct. This is a list of uh, <clears throat> vehicles actively registered to me. But that doesn't tell me if I have any vehicles. This is faster to just do this. Uh, vehicle. Derby from Alabama. Why though? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah, I made the I made it. Yeah. This is me. <laughs> That's not really necessary. <laughs> no, these are home page modifications. That just happened. No, 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 no. Oh, goodness. Stay with me. Oh, that's a complete redo. Let's go back. We have to go back. There we are. By the way, thank you for the uh, <clears throat> attention to my voice. Believe it or not, I sing, in, uh, I sing praise and in the choir at church. But this... Uh, <clears throat> this catch, uh, this catch that makes me sound like this. It's pretty common for me.
<clears throat> Especially in the morning. So at my church, I'm like popping Ricola. Only thing better is Fisherman's Friend. That's harder to find. edition I don't see a problem with adjusting that <sighs> I put notes in here for what I need to do next and then uh, so I got that this needs to be filed properly under to do and then Here's where I was making the changes. My, oops, oh, that's right. My most, most, most favorite thing about Vim is infinite undos and time-stamped undos. Oh, what was that? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. So I can step backwards in time. Uh, through my file and all of the changes that I've made to it over the entire life of the file and step forward you know step back and then step forward although this is concerning this is not saving my mark mark Oh, hi, Mark. That's interesting. Anyway. Uh, where was that? Where are you? Why won't you do this? Not like this. Not like this. End of resident, beginning of visitor. So that would put me weird. So there's a visitor. You can add vehicles and modify its profiles. Quick stream check here. Talkie talkie. Come on, internet. good. Neat. Uh, oh. Log in. Let me pop out the chat. <coughs> chop out the pack. thinking about <clears throat> my stream the other day and how it's <laughs> dumb. I, mean, I don't I don't understand. Like you all can't see my screen. It's got customer data on it. <sighs> and it's at like five in the morning and 
like a lot of the times it's just me like this <laughs> waking up but whatever seems to get watched plus it keeps me honest counts for a lot <clears throat> This is a user. That is a user and you can add vehicles and modify his profile and make sure they have it. cannot present himself. It's a separate user, he doesn't have the ability. Uh -huh. I think we talked about this yesterday. I'm gonna start up view your mind and then the whole stream is gonna burst into flames. Visitors are limited by unit. That's done. Yeah. Yeah, I could use some testing. means I need multiple visitors invited to the same <coughs> unit and have them invite hang on a minute this isn't this isn't the flow of logic though That's right. I discussed this, but did I write it down? That's the real question. Consider invites. That should be unit. Ah, come on, coffee. You can do it. You can win. Well, they can't deactivate, or they can deactivate. Did I just make a plate? Oh, no, no. Uh, adding a plate is not uh, approved. This user. Um, what is the Well, I just blocked the invite though. No, I 
block the button press, <coughs> user should still be able to send the invite. Just when he accepts. allow him to participate in the process, but he has a list that's deactivated. No, he's a user that's deactivated. He's, he's revoked. He's created as revoked if he's registering as a user. as a visitor, you're getting an invitation ID, and from there we're determining the unit ID, which is... Shoot. Backwards, backwards, backwards. About the unit ID, the unit needs to be set. Use the them X dots on user creation, that's right. There we go. What is the error if the user sends an invite and the unit has sufficient? It would have to be created in a revoked state. I think I already wrote something here. This is this needs to happen right now, so vehicle addition needs adjusted permissions. And that means that level and then the name. Except that doesn't show me content. Um from makes a resident 30 visitor 23 yeah it's okay level. Uh, there we are. Change that to 23. Alabama. That's me. Uh, except it says it just added it, and my plate generation is not displayed properly. Uh, okay. Looking for the first. Ugh. Where is my 
Where is my super suit? Hang on a minute. That's adding. What? Oh, I'm over here. Solo cuando yo pienso Assigned unit. Boy, how did you get created? Oh, nothing's ever easy. All right, so let's look into the abyss of the database. When you look into the abyss, the abyss looks back into you. It's actually not that big of a database. box is chunky. I'd be looking for the bottom side of a play. Talking to me? No, no, yes. Where are you? No, this is if we're doing a flag. Oi! You don't know me. This is a definition. happened. This is tripping with
Yes, yes. It's time to stop. But what's more important is... Because it's an individual vehicle ad. Ah. That's why it doesn't have any access level. Yeah, that's why. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a bad way to do that. I don't want to copy the code. individual owner that's creating a tag but in the instance of a wait a minute how did you do this ah Propaganda, eh? They began with the end in mind. <sighs> I'm saving my space. This is where I stop. It's time to stop. This is where. Am I taller or something? What's going on here? Oh, I installed this desk mat. Oh, come on. Seriously? Sitting here like, man, my desk, my, my keyboard seems higher, my, my wrists are out of alignment. Like, why? I haven't adjusted anything. I'm wearing the same shoes. And I realized I installed this desk mat. And the desk mat adds like, no joke. I would measure it if I had a calipers here. Like five millimeters? Five millimeters? And I can register that. It, it feels weird. The ergos, man. Pop it one down. Oh. What the heck? That is super weird. What is my text with? Thirty four. My text with should be. 13. Yeah, yeah, Pep 8. Whatever. What Guido doesn't know won't hurt him. I know rules are rules for a reason. Look, you have to understand what the rules are in order to break. You understand? No, no, no. You understand why the rules are before you can break them. 
You don't understand the why you can't break them. This is where I need to add the setup so that... This doesn't count. I'm, it's time to stop, but I'm saving my work. Handling the vehicle creation. Oh, I didn't even get commit. <laughs> Take my break to research PHP functions. It's an exciting break, I tell you what. too far over. Uh, it's PHP. Oh, no, 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 no. Not there, not there. That's private data for a customer. And I don't think you can see that screen anyways, actually. But whatever. No. Oi. No. What is that screen? It's like PHP info dot PHP dot info or something. Come on, W3 schools. W3 schools is great. I go there for the straight poop. Function name is not case sensitive. It's kind of weird. But whatever. And my passing arguments do I have to predefine? Okay, that's okay. I don't have to declare variable types. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, we can set defaults. That's good too. Definition. Uh, oh, I don't like PHP. Uh. <clears throat> There's a lot of work for it. Reliable work, <laughs> not startup work. All right, so if you want to get in on the ground floor of an exciting new opportunity. 
We're looking for a rock star, superstar. Ugh. Ugh. Rock star, superstar is code. Is code. Is code for. Uh, we're looking for a rock star, a programmer, a superstar coder. That's uh, loosely translated as uh, a 22 year old with no life who can do literally nothing but code for tens of hours at a time and work for the promise of future possibilities while the stats on business failures are pretty exaggerated um, startup failures that's high risk right there and they usually just burn through their capital <clears throat> but if you're there if you are the 23 year old who can program for 20 hours at a time and then sleep for four and program a 20 more if you can do it <laughs> get it the pay should be commensurate 100k at least probably higher definitely higher <clears throat> I used to be there I would program for fun in my spare time didn't have many responsibilities not there now now it's just like hey give us all your time and it might pay off yeah it doesn't fly anymore bud Speaking of being 23 and coding for 20 hours a day in a crappy chair. Oh man. <sighs> Pay attention to your ergos, guys. Pay for it later. Compound interest. It always comes due. So we're going to PHP function look like this. On this page, we're gonna do right. What is the diff formatting for adjusting next? What is it? G brace, Z brace. 
Score Brace, G Perem, G N. This is a Git Fugitive Diff statement showing the uh, the changes. <clears throat> In this case, adjusting the access and adding this block of notes, which is totally fine. That's useful, actually. It's not that much stuff. Yeah, I'm okay with this. This is an individual commit. Let 
does apply to the unit, not the user. Oh, plus comments, I guess. Where am I? Signing the unit. <clears throat> Hang on a minute. It is a signing unit. So why would it be unsigned? Because my unit is defined by the host visitor, the host visitation. So that would mean that my ad vehicle, which is on the home page, is adjusted by the temporary ad. I'm adding a vehicle, but my unit ID is not populated like this because I'm just sending vehicle data to it. Ah, there's my notes. GF. Uh -huh. <laughs> Vim is an iterative learning process. post on Reddit, which is actually probably worth its own post. So, that's for visitor processing. I 
post on Reddit talking about desks, how it's better in that way than Emacs, but Emacs is better in many more ways. Should be taking advantage of this plasticity to learn Dirt Emacs, particularly with this keyboard. Just took up Control and Alt on Easy Keys. Easy Keys. I'm not sure I could run Emacs on this remote box. Time is running out. Make a move. Where was I? It's my train of thought. There is my train of thought. <laughs> There's a modifier. There's a modifier you could do for the train of thought <laughs> of this steam locomotive that makes it on fire. <laughs> People are yelling for help, which might be more applicable for my train of thought. Adding a vehicle. Right. This is the vehicle edition. And I'm looking for the unit assignment. That's the one. And that's the definition for the owner plate, but not here. Right? Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If he's not active, he can't be here. Why well, click this? Which means, in this instance, sucking unit ID from user data when the user's active. Well, that doesn't make sense, though. How would he be defined? Well, that's the problem, he's undefined. If I were me, and I am, how would I do this? have no unit assigned. Are you an owner? You are an owner. You are not an owner. You are a visitor. Oh no. Yeah, this is integrating Two versions. This is why Waterfall is cool. Oh. No, Waterfall is easier programming wise than. What do they call it? Rainbow or some garbage? All I can think of is House of Lean. Agile, that's what it is. Technically, I implement Agile, but it's harder. <laughs> Especially for one person. You know, if you're a freelancer, you kind of have to make it ad yeah, Agile. Agile? You have to, have to make it Agile. <clears throat> Otherwise, unless your customers are rare birds that don't really care if you have updates. Uh, next you would... Cool! <laughs> Building a keyboard entirely out of wood. Love it. Love it. There was a Reddit post a while back about some dude who uh, took a, a plate, like a 
like a like a ten mil steel plate. Seriously, uh, scribed off his marks and his uh, separations, drilled holes for his key switches, and then took a freaking file, man, a file, and filed them square <laughs> from a round drill hole. <laughs> Oh man, respect, respect. I don't even know. This is, a, this is like you, you kiss the peace sign and then beat it against your chest, or I don't know. That's something different. <clears throat> Wood's a bit easier. <laughs> Wood, you can get a chisel. Plus, it's a little. It's a lot more forgiving. You can go to a. So, like, I'm always about the rapid proto. Oh crap! Hang on. Um. 624, we got time. Uh, let's see. In this instance, the unit. Agile implementation, because you have to have a, yeah, unless you have a rare bird for a customer. Yeah, unless your customer is like, hey, I'll just keep sending you money while I don't see any results. You kind of have to implement Agile. <laughs> and that was working backwards to the point of... Right, it's a unit definition. A unit definition is tied to user directly. Uh huh. That's phase two, which means when implementing a phase two user. Phase two sounds cooler than version two. Do that. Except the vehicle add takes place. The vehicle add takes place independent of the unit, which means when the vehicle's referenced. Oh bugger. It's a mandel box. It's cascading changes. is currently defined by active residency. We need to have plates created. No. It gets a location assignment. Still needs a unit assignment. Yeah. Because the, the plates list is a dumb list. And you activate or deactivate individual vehicles. Right. Residencies. Let's 
Interline can still indicate an assigned unit ID. Got it. Whew. That was difficult. Which means after the assignment, if the assignment is still zero, because he has no unit. So this is determining unit ID assignment, which is okay. But the code we're running is dependent upon whether or not he is a frequent visitor or a resident. 34 seconds. Okay, yes. Next to it. <clears throat> with wood. Brought extra wood so I could cut it with an X-Acto knife. Right. So, um, in, in all things, iterations are key. Uh, being able to iterate quickly through designs or changes, things you want to do and make and to be able to undo it and redo it easily is key. Um, I mean, in all things, like uh, it, it just makes it with wood. With wood, so I cut it with exactly not right. So, um, okay. In, in all things, yes. In all things, faster iteration time is always better. Um, so. What you want to be able to do is, if, you, if you're thinking about getting into something or you want to try something out, uh, being able to get something running quickly, be using it as quickly as possible, and to use it as much as possible before, you know, before you move on to the next thing, that's the big deal. So working with a, a much easier material like wood is great, but like, like I said, I'm into the rapid prototyping. It's very important. It's part of why I don't like you know, 3D printing for uh, keyboard plates, um, but wood is much, much, much more forgiving, and you can get things like uh, uh, balsa wood. Yeah, uh, get balsa wood and cut that because balsa wood you can buy that at like a, a local hobby store, and you can. Uh, cut it with an exacto knife very easy to cut and you can get like loose cuts and then hot glue it in place you know you don't have to be exact um, <clears throat> but once you get it in place then you can actually start running it and that that's where the, the power comes in is when you can actually like be working with it that's why I advise people to, to learn to hand wire because you can try all kinds of different designs uh, the most rapid prototype that I had come up with and that's something that uh, I have not yet implemented, but I do plan on it. Oh, I got package to ship today. There we go. <clears throat> if you're in the, this is the wrong size package. Butter. Anyways, if you're in the U.S., 
you can go to UPS, <laughs> UPS, uh, you can go to the post office and get one of their little small stand-up boxes that has uh, uh, flat rate boxes. You can go there and grab a stack and just walk right out. Um, but it's illegal to use them for something other than shipping, probably. Uh, and then just take that cardboard, you know, it's regular corrugated cardboard, and uh, draw, sketch out your, your switch areas, make a little square guide for how big the cuts need to be for a switch, and then cut them into the cardboard. The cardboard's not going to stand up to any kind of pressure though, right? So after you get your cuts good, get resin, like fiberglass resin or um, epoxy, and then paint it on. And uh, depending on how much you like your switches, uh, if those are going to be your switches, because I, I would much rather you be able to put them in and then take them out later to harvest them, but you would paint or just heavily coat the, um, the cardboard, because the cardboard will absorb a lot of the resin and then just let that harden. And then you'll have basically what you cut easily, very easily with a knife out of cardboard will be very, very hard. And then you have a plate and you can build from there. Yeah, balsa wood. That's great. You can do the same thing with the balsa wood because the balsa wood is very, very, um, um, very, it's too flexible, it's too fragile. You know, it's made to be lightweight, but you can snap it with your fingers, and that's exactly what you will do once you're done. Um, the turning something into a plate means removing a lot of material from it. So, structurally, it gets... There we go. Structurally, it gets weakened pretty significantly. So, you'll get things like this... Um, your corners will probably break off first because you're you're losing a lot of material from it. Come on, internet. There we go. See that? That's the corner from this, or one of the corners. So keep that in mind uh, because you're gonna you're ba you're removing a lot of material from it, so you're weakening it automatically through that process, so uh, the epoxy is probably even more recommended as a finisher once you get the balsa wood set up. Um, you can get away with thicker wood, it just requires a chisel and it's a bit harder to work with, but you could do it. Like, just get in there, man. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, and this is something that I didn't really do, and I kind of wish I did. Um, if you're set on your key switches or your key locations, like a lot of people just want to go uh, a, uh, a square grid approach, uh, and like they don't care if it's just a grid, like they're not looking to uh, do any kind of uh, vertical stagger. And if they're not trying to do any kind of vertical stagger, then when you make your keyboard, when you make your switch plate, I should say, you should cut it out as separate pieces. So cut out uh, a split. Whether or not you actually split them is up to you. Like, cut it out so that they fit together if you want to fit them together, but also cut it down the middle so that you have pieces that you can float around and move and if you want, get another piece of wood and then mount it there. You know, I want to try this angle. Take out your plates that have the switches installed on them already hand wired and put them into this base. And then put them into a base where they're rotated, they're straight. Put them into a base where they're spread out and standing up. Like, then you don't have to remove the switches and re hand wire every single time. It saves you a lot of time, an iterative process, and that's kind of something that I wish that I had done. Or learned earlier on. Um, now that that applies if you are if you've already decided on your uh, the orientation of your keys. If you're just making a grid like this, if you weren't sure about the orientation of your keys, or you were adjusting these sections vertically, you know the middle finger should be a little longer. That kind of thing. Then uh, you. 
and I don't know about this, I haven't tested this certainly, you would make strips. So your plate is a strip of keys, a vertical strip. And then you can mount that in different places and move it up and down and then pick it up and move it to another location and make it stand up and do whatever you want with it. But the idea is to just keep those switches out so that you reduce your hand wiring time because hand wiring takes up a lot of time and reduce your uh, switch addition and removal. I actually, I should just bite the bullet and pay someone to design it. I have this design for a uh, for a self reinforce it with wood model sticks. Yes, yes, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> wood model sticks, awesome. That's my. Uh, I had like clothes pins that I was using for my plate, <laughs> just as a standoff. Um, I mean, if you're making just a forty percent, I mean. Yeah, you can make one out of trash, uh, but what I'd recommend probably is, um, um, oh, this. This is a, a JJ40, and this is off of um, AliExpress uh, KB store, I think, but it's just the PCB. It's $37.50, and... Uh, it'll get you a 40% keyboard that will work. Uh, you'll have a PCB, you'll need switches and caps, but that's it. Once you get switches and caps, you know, you, you probably want to put QMK on it. That's a better firmware, and that's moderately easy to do. Uh, it's a process that I wanted to integrate into the keyboards I was selling, and I, I actually have some extra ones of these around the only benefit to it is you don't have to buy a teensy because it's already got the port set you can get QM it's a little bit harder to get QMK installed on it but once it's there it's there and uh, and you get uh, RGB LEDs which I'm not gonna plug in and blow up the the white balance adjustment that's the case of the tasty keyboard <laughs> uh, I think you get a lot of value for thirty seven dollars and fifty cents um, but my, uh, gosh, digressions, uh, yeah, if you just want a straight 40, this is a pretty good way to do it. Uh, you'll still have to get switches, which you can get, you probably want to harvest is the cheapest way to get them. Although for 40, it's like, it's like $41 or $42 to get proper cherries, um, but you don't have to go that route. And then the cheapest caps I was able to find, um, probably the G80s off of Geek Hack. Geek Hack. Um, PMK, Pimp My Keyboard. They've got G80 sets that are good, except they're kind of low profile and they lack homing bumps. And the reason they lack homing bumps is because they actually have such a uh, solid pad printing on it like it's, it's a very resilient pad printing and it's so the fact that it's so resilient is what makes it very, or the reason it's so resilient is because it's very thick and the pad printing of the lettering is actually so thick that it feels like homing bumps when you you drop your fingers on it and you're like oh I'm on the home row and you're you're like anywhere you could be on any key and it'll feel like home bumps uh, but the way they went around that is they they got their F and their J keys scooped so there, it's a much lower, like it, it's it's a it's a dip when you come down on it. So it's it's a little harder to feel for, but once you get there, you're okay. Um, it's just a little weird. But you can buy those. Gosh, I think it, I think they sell those for like sixteen bucks, and that'll get you QWERTY keys. Uh, it won't get you edge keys, but you'll get QWERTY keys. And then you'll just buy some individual caps for the, the outsides. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, completely self-made. You know, respect, man. Um, first electronics project. Has a custom bottom space. Oh, cool. Nice. That's what I like to hear. Uh, customize things, we improve them. Make things better. Like I said, iterative. 
So uh, if you want, make that bottom space bar area removable so that you can tweak it and move it around and pull that section off and put in a new one where you have more keys or less keys or different keys or you know a key under here under the palm outside that's actually something I'm messing around with um, I, think I might have to disconnect here <clears throat> that's two not bad Uh, but yeah, the hand wiring process, I'm sure I've made this recommendation before, but I'd recommend starting with a TNC 2.0. Very forgiving and very easy to work with on hand wiring, uh, hand wired builds. And uh, if you get stuck, man, just send me an email. I've made so many easy AVR um, hand wire files that it's take me like 10 minutes to make one less than that so if you if you want easy AVR which I recommend and you're using a teensy which I recommend also um, yeah just try to get your hand wire build going with the file that is uh, available on git github I have a video on that on how to make your hand wire build workable in uh, easy AVR but if you get stuck just email me I'll make it. Um, gosh, yeah, I had a uh, design that I want to get implemented. I probably have to just deal with it and pay someone to get it made. But it's just a PCB. It's a PCB that's a vertical strip of keys. And you're going to take multiple ones and set them next to each other and adjust them to your finger heights so that it feels comfortable and then there will be solder joints so that you can permanently attach them or, or um, jumper pins so that you can permanently attach them together uh, and then they'll still connect the rows and columns when you connect the jumper pins across or the rows rather not the columns columns are verticals so the idea is a completely customizable PCB. So you're exactly to your hand. Like I still, there's some math to figure out um, because your finger length actually affects your reach, which means it, it goes further. Um, overall length, and then of course your finger height uh, defines partially the variation because that height difference can be exaggerated by a longer finger because you have longer reach. Your pinky has the least, obviously, because it has the least reach and it has the least length. So, you know, technically, what you would want to do for a pinky is get smaller key switches, but that's just not, it's not in the cards yet, at least. But there's some math to figure out as far as your, your finger height and the differentiation to, uh, pick up to figure out the optimal you know height and uh, the ratio for those so that they're separated correctly but I am glad to have uh, spurred some creativity and uh, getting people ready to start a mechanical keyboard project um, just you know get something that's very programmable that's why I recommend starting with uh, easy AVR and with a teensy 2.0 because it makes it super super easy because you could use that TNC loader to load up all the software you want as quickly as you want. And Easy AVR is super easy. It has a great GUI. And it's just easy to mess with stuff. Like I said, iterative processes. Just keep iterating. Just keep making it better. And, uh, you know, your keyboard, your mechanical keyboard will be more than just a pretty face. Or it'll be ugly, so it'll have to be more than a pretty face. <laughs> My keyboard was, my first keyboard was very ugly, uh, but it facilitated a level of work that was undeniable. I, I had, I got so much more work done with it, just with the programming of it and being able to set up macros and stuff. So, uh, you know, I get on about this, but mechanical keyboards are for doing work. They are they are extremely powerful tools and most people are barely scratching the surface 
or if you're on RMK, you're just like buying different, slightly different shades of blue and you're going, wow, neat. <laughs> so much power in these devices and I don't think people respect that. Which is a shame because it can do a lot of work for them. Um, all right, I am out of here. Awesome to hear Nexuid about that project. Uh, I want to see it, man. You know, I started out making imager or imager albums. Just take pictures along the way, man. Um, it inspires other people, obviously. You know, that's why you're here. Um, that video I made on hand wiring was like, who in the hell is going to watch this? This is ridiculous. This makes no sense, but I'm just going to hit record on the camera and then I'll just go and see what happens. And it came out really, well, I don't know if it came out well, but it was very well received and it has certainly inspired people to, to hand wire their own builds. So, you know, make your project, make it out of popsicle sticks, make it out of, uh, you know, cardboard with resin and pregnant, blah, blah, blah epoxy impregnated cardboard you know something something crazy like that it inspires other people it works i have a link if you're yes i am interested actually um always interested in people's builds especially the janky builds um someone had a uh, a build that was uh Someone had a build that was, uh, what was it? He made it, yeah, that's right. He made it, and it was, oh, that's right. He made it, and it was made out of card. It had a hard cardboard bottom, and he wrapped rubber bands around it <laughs> to hold the cardboard on. <laughs> and I realized that I, I actually wound up doing that with this one uh, because I didn't have a way to attach this. That was zero footprint, uh, and it's just cardboard from a pizza box, obviously. And I used my daughter's hair tie bands, like a, a rubber band. And what I did, I realized that it, it fit, it held the PCB it, 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 with the cardboard. It didn't interfere with the switch actuation. And it provided friction on the bottom as feet so the keyboard didn't slide around. I was like, it's brilliant. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, it was said it was holding the image for review, but let me see if I can get it. I think I approved the image, but I've honestly never done this before. Nah, didn't like that. No, I can't get that. I can't view that image. Let's try this one. Nope, that one didn't work either. Um, you might have... Uh, it might need to be set to public, otherwise you can send the link, like email me the link. Yeah, I've got the URL right. It's just not coming through. Either way, um, yeah, email me the link, dude. That's cool. I want to see it. Uh, but I got to get out of here, get to uh, get ready for my day job. It's time to stop. right here. Nice. Um, Alright guys. GG.